This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1733. Strength and the Blender Bottle, a modern tale of intention and power by Stella Kaufman with markfisherfitness.com. And I'm Dr. Neil, your host and narrator. Hey there, happy Saturday and welcome back to Optimal Health Daily or OHD, where I act as your narrator of popular health and fitness blogs and always with a bit of my commentary at the end. Now don't forget, we have a bunch of shows where we cover a bunch of different topics, not just health stuff. Just search for Optimal Living Daily in your podcast app to find all of them. And with that, let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. Strength and the Blender Bottle, a modern tale of intention and power by Stella Kaufman with markfisherfitness.com. First, a story. Once upon a time, there was a girl. She was a lucky, lucky girl. She was in good health, had a good job, food to eat, and good friends. There was even a beautiful tree right outside the window of her apartment in New York City. She lifted heavy bars and swung around heavy cannonballs at a gym. And as she got stronger at the gym, she found herself wanting to be stronger in the rest of her life. She knew that lifting heavy bars and swinging around heavy stuff should be making her even stronger both in and outside of the gym. She ate protein and green vegetables. She drank water. Yet, she felt the strength she was able to muster at the gym wasn't showing itself outside the gym, physically or mentally. It was perplexing, a conundrum, a mystery indeed. One day, after a particularly stressful day at work, she was feeling a bit grumpy. While she dutifully made her protein shake, she wondered why that protein powder never fully dissolves. She hated that clumpy thing that happens. And after all, we have Google and space travel and Amazon Prime. Why can't we find a way to dissolve the protein powder? And that's when it happened. In the middle of her internal first world rant over, embarrassingly, insignificant problems, she had an epiphany. What if, what if she shook the blender bottle harder? In reality, she was maybe using only one-tenth or even one-one-hundredth of her blender bottle shaking strength capabilities. So what if she just added some power? This was her moment. She took a deep breath and shook the blender bottle a little harder. She put just a tad bit of muscle into it. And as you may have already guessed, the protein powder dissolved. That can't be, she thought. Was she not using even the tiniest bit of strength to shake these protein shakes before? She didn't have to use a lot of strength at all. It was just enough of an amount to indicate minimal effort. She drank the shake. It was so much better without the clumps. Newly energized with this incredible knowledge, she wondered what might happen if she used this strength in other places in her life, in working out, in walking her dog. She was going to do it. She was reminded each day when she made her protein shakes and shook the blender bottle. They really are so much better without those powder clumps. Armed with a new awareness, she carried on in life with a bit more intention and a little bit more strength. She found herself walking with a bit more energy, springing up the subway stairs and ironically, bench pressing more at the gym, which is what started her strength journey to begin with. Putting intention to power. Imagine what you could do better with a little more power. And by a little more, I mean the amount of strength it requires to dissolve the powder in a protein shake. For the sake of argument, we'll assume you have enough strength to make a clump-free protein shake. Then the question becomes, if you're working out to get strong at the gym, lifting heavy and swinging around cannonballs, Why aren't you stronger at everything outside the gym? Maybe, just maybe, it's about accessing the power. Looking back at our fairy tale, the girl had the power, but she needed to unlock her intention to tap into her power. The same muscles, the same stamina, the same mobility is required for so many things. So why should the grocery bag seem heavy when you're doing farmer carries at the gym with 20 kilogram kettlebells? Keep this in mind. 1. Your mind and body are connected. Your thoughts and your abilities are magically linked. While strength often creates limits on what you're able to do, your mind can create limits on your strength. Just like everything else you've probably heard a million times over, your message to yourself holds tremendous power over what you can do. And 2. How we do one thing 
is how we do everything. Practicing putting intention to power will put intention to power outside the gym and vice versa. We humans tend to follow patterns of behavior, and this is another one of those. Access your power. Some thoughts on how to train yourself to access your power. One, pay attention to the next time you feel annoyed or frustrated about something. Maybe it's something silly, like getting the protein powder to dissolve. Or maybe it's something bigger, like feeling overpowered at your job. Next, close your eyes for one second and remember the time you were going to lift something heavy at the gym, how you took a deep breath and fueled your strength with intention. I know this may sound kind of like Pollyanna, cheesy mind over matter, annoying BS, but it works. Have you ever been to a wine tasting where they have you smell different spices and then when you taste the wine, you taste the spices in the wine? Or have you ever had someone tell you about something that's common, but you never noticed it before? And now, all of a sudden, you notice it everywhere. It's kind of like that. Three, revisit whatever was giving you trouble in number one. Four, repeat as new challenges present themselves. And five, admire your strength. You're a bad Ideally, after practicing this, accessing your strength will become automatic. And that's pretty great. The moral of the story. Power is power. Tapping into your intention acts like a boost that makes your strength transferable, kind of like a flow that is present mentally and physically in all you do. With a little awareness and a lot of practice, you can call on your power for everything, mentally and physically, without even thinking about it. What else in your life might improve if you put intent to power? Would you run faster? Walk further? Would you be more confident at work? Would your attitude be better? Would your relationships change? Once you can access that raw power, where can it take you? You just listened to the post titled Strength and the Blender Bottle, A Modern Tale of Intention and Power by Stella Kaufman with markfisherfitness.com. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. I know today's author, Stella, tried to convince you about the importance of mind over matter. Were you really convinced though? Do me a favor and humor me for a second. If it's safe to do so right now, close your eyes. If it's not safe to close your eyes right now, that's fine. I'm gonna guess this little trick will still work even if your eyes are open. It's just that closing your eyes tends to make it work even better. Okay, your eyes are closed. All you have to do is listen to my cues. And again, humor me. Here we go. Imagine there's a bright yellow lemon sitting on a cutting board in front of you. Next to it is a knife. You pick up that bright yellow lemon and hold it close to your nose to make sure it's ready to slice. You can immediately smell that strong lemon flavor from the lemon skin. It's ready to cut. You take the knife and slice the lemon in half. Cutting through the lemon skin and the flesh of the fruit releases even more of that amazing lemon aroma. It smells so good, you think, nothing that smells that good could taste sour, right? So you grab a small glass and squeeze half of the lemon you just cut into the glass. You don't add any water or sugar and take a big gulp of it. Yikes, that was way more sour than you thought. Okay, open your eyes. Did anything happen while I was narrating? Did you find that as I talked more about the lemon and you imagined that lemon and imagining how sour that lemon juice was, did you start producing more saliva? Did the glands under your tongue, what we call salivary glands, start to get activated? If so, that's very normal. And here's the thing. You didn't actually drink pure lemon juice, but by just me talking about it, your body responded. Your body believed what your mind was telling it. This works if you sit there and close your eyes or imagine that you're gonna get up and talk in front of a bunch of people, for example. Imagine you standing there on a stage having to talk to hundreds of people. You might find your heart rate automatically goes up, your blood pressure goes up. That's not actually happening, but you just thinking about it changed your physiology. Your body responded to something your mind imagined. Well, do you believe in mind over matter now? All right, I hope you're having a great weekend if you're listening in real time. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing the show with someone. In fact, that's one of the best ways to keep this show going. If you think someone would like what we discuss on this podcast, 
share it with them and let them know we exist. And don't forget, I'll see you back here tomorrow for the Sunday show and where your optimal life awaits.